this computer. All right, we are recording now. Now we'll go to the Bible study. And I'm going to go back to this actually and share my screen again. Okay. All right. So we're going to go through this um, and we'll, uh, we're going to go to uncharted territory. Now, I know we're kind of all in a little bit of uncharted territory with this uh, coronavirus, but <clears throat> a couple of opening questions. What are some points in your life when you weren't sure what the next step was? Anybody got something? When you bring that first child home yes. from the hospital. <laughs> you didn't have it all figured out, Allison? They don't give you a manual with the child. They gave us a little book with the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bringing the child home, absolutely. What else? I, I would have to say when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Okay. Kind of clueless that you're relying on the doctors to tell you what to do next. Mm. Okay. Anybody else? So the next question is, how do you handle those situations? How do you make it through those times when you're not sure what's next? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I was thinking, you know, points. I, there's, there's so many. I don't know how you pick one. It was every call to every church and every mm -hmm. position in ministry and every, every step along the way has been a major transition and not ever having gone down that path before, including cancer and now kidney stuff. That's all new stuff. I do remember when I was diagnosed with cancer several years ago, they had me on the operating table. Well, they had me on the gurney going to the operating room first time I'd really faced a major life or death kind of issue, physical life or death issue, because they weren't sure what they were going to get into when they got in there, you know. And I just remember what for me has been a mantra over the years that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I always go back to Romans 8, that absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That that for me has been kind of the touchstone for every transition, for every kind of illness, that it just doesn't matter. That, you know, God God is ultimately in control and ultimately will win. Absolutely. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. That's a good yeah. word. Anybody else? How do you handle those situations when you're not sure what's next? I guess I'd say lots of prayer. Mm -hmm. Does you music help? Oh, say that again. Sorry. Allison stole my answer. Okay. Um, what about music? Does music help? Uh, my wife would say yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say yes, too. <laughs> I'd say it depends on who's in the car and what the channel is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, God's word. Um, going back and, 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 and looking at all that. And 
something else for me, and and uh, as we go on here, an important reminder. Now, this is the most obvious thing ever. As I wrote it, I'm like, this is this is silly. But uh, when we get into those situations where it's like, this is bigger than me, I don't really know what to do next, like we're living in right now, the important reminder for me was we're not the first to experience uncertain times. Right. Um, and the Bible is full of people that made it through difficult times, times that looked completely impossible. And on top of just outside of the Bible, our country pulls through during times like these. Mm -hmm. I've had multiple people tell me uh, this week, this feels like what it felt like when we went through 9-11. Like this is one of those turning stone turning points that that um that you know it changes the way we we go um about our daily lives uh but i mean of course that one was in my lifetime but i mean we've we've made it through stuff even bigger than that with world wars and great depressions and um other epidemics um and so i think it's important for us to to uh remember that we're not alone in this, that this isn't the first time uh, that we're going through anything like this. Other thoughts there before we go on? Um, Tonight, uh, I wanted us to look at Rebecca's story uh, because certainly uncharted territory, that was uh, a lot of what she did in her life. Um, And so I'm going to flip back and forth to the Bible. If you've got a Bible, you can open it up to Genesis chapter 24. Um, but I'm going to flip my screen over here um, to to do it this way as well. Uh, and I'm going to yeah, read. I can't, get, I, can't, I can't get the volume to, to turn up, though. So. Computer volume? Oh, here you go. Okay. All right. Abraham was now very old, and the yeah. Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to his to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom whom I'm living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son, Isaac. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The, God, the Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham, and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant left, taking with him ten of his master's camels loaded with all kinds of good, of good things from his master. He set out for Aram Naharim. Now, um, Abraham made his servant make an oath. Go back and get a wife for Isaac. Um, and what was the second part of the oath? Or not to be a Can- from Canaan. Yes, not to be from Canaan. And what if she said no? Was he supposed to take Isaac back? No. Do not take Isaac back to his father's land. Uh, why do you think this was such a big deal? Why was why were these the two big things that uh, that Abraham made him swear? He knew what God had promised him, and he knew that if he if Isaac went back to the land that he had come from, then he would not be standing on what God's promises were for him in the future. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he didn't want him looking backwards. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. He also didn't want him to get mixed up with people that he wasn't supposed to be mixed up with. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, even where we are right now, uh, you know, with all the coronavirus stuff, so many times we want to look back and say, man, it was, and, and it was, I mean, even three weeks ago, life was, was easier. Um, but looking back doesn't help us to live in faith where we are right now. Now, it's important to remember where we've come from. But at the same time, if, we are set, if we're setting our hearts on going back, um, then we can't truly live where we are. Um, the other thing that really stands out to me from this passage, this part of the passage, is that the servant was, was obedient. He got up and he went. Um, we don't have to understand everything to do uh, to do what we know is right. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to follow instructions sometimes, um, especially when the instructions are changing as fast as they are uh, with this scenario. And it's like, I don't understand, you know, one day this is okay. And the next day that sounds crazy. But this, the next day, it sounds like, boy, that's way too lenient. So um, what I, as Christians, though, I think it's important for us to remember we don't have to know everything to keep doing what we know is right. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Anybody have a thought on that? No is an acceptable answer. <laughs> so. no, I, well, what I was thinking was it helped the servant to have the resources he thought he would need to accomplish the task. That's right. Because he had the camels. That's Ten right. Camels, you know, he, he wasn't going empty handed and without preparation and without uh, some resources. Mm -hmm. Abraham didn't send him out on his own. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm also struck by how he had to wait. You know, it took time for for the servant to go and to find the woman and then to convince the woman to come back with him and then to travel back to the land. And so sometimes the obedience comes in waiting and not rushing. Yep. Mm -hmm. I love to wait. You're probably by yourself. <laughs> uh, is that what is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. We, my, yeah. That is that is. You're exactly right, Allison. It is so hard to wait. Um, and but our, you know, that's part of being obedient, though. Uh, that is absolutely part of being obedient. All right. Well, let's look at the next section uh, of the scripture here. Uh, verses. What did I have on there? 11 through 14. He had the camels near down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time when the, the, the time the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar, that I may have a drink, and she says, drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Um, this always uh, amazes me, this, this interchange here. Um, and one of the things that really stands out to me first is the servant didn't pick a random location. Uh, why did he pick the, the right there beside the river? It's where the pretty girls were. <laughs> it's true. He put himself in a place to be successful. He didn't go to a Napa auto store and ask for groceries. You know, 
he went to a place where he could be successful. And I think as Christians, we need to do that as well. Uh, so many times we feel like, you know, we get isolated uh, in our relationship with God. And, you know, the first question is, well, how's your Bible reading going? Are you listening to, to uh, hymns and some Christian music? Are you talking to people uh, about Jesus? Are you going to church? Did you get on the Zoom call? You know, all these things that are so normal to us. Um, but you have to put yourself in a position to be able to hear God. Um, too often, our world convinces us just to stay where we are, to bury our head in the sand, to turn on the TV and to listen to everything that they're saying. And, um, and we don't hear God's voice because there's too many other voices yelling in our ears. Uh, so if we want to be, uh, if we want to hear God, if we want to be successful in what God's asking us to do, we need to put ourselves in a place to be successful. Uh, any thoughts there? This is KP. Hey, KP. Hey. I'm uh, sorry. I was a little late coming in. Um, no, but I think. I think um, it really, in, in reference to your point, it, it's just a reminder to be still and know that I am God. You know, you just need to, it's hard to hear anybody speaking to you when you've got lots of noise around anytime, right? That's right. So why should it be any easier to hear God speaking to you when you've got noise all around you? And I think that's why we see so often um, in the Bible and scripture and uh, uh, devotions to remind us to just be still and be quiet and quit thinking and quit talking and just listen for the Lord. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and KP, that is a, a perfect transition there to the next point. He prayed. The servant got there, and then he looked. He turned his eyes to God, and he stopped and listened. Uh, and he asked for clear direction. I, I love this. I, I love this part because he says, "God, may the the woman that I go and I talk to, and I ask if you'll water, if you'll give me water, may she offer water to the camels, and she can be the one." And um, I think in our lives, we really do need to ask for clear direction. Um, and we need to pray about specific interactions we have with the people around us. Um, so many times we go into places and, and, and people react in different ways. And sometimes people will just blow it up, blow up at us for, for no reason that we think of. But I think we need to be praying about what's going on in that person's uh, world what are they thinking and feeling right now? Why would they do, why would they, what would make them act the way that they're acting right now? And how could I help? Uh, now I want to be careful with that. How could I help? Because a lot of times we try to be very helpful and sometimes our very helpful nature can actually push people very, uh, push people away. Um, and I, I just, I remember different circumstances in, in my life where I've gone up and I tried to be very helpful and the person was like, I don't need your help right now. Um, so sometimes how can I help is really just, how can I listen to this person? Um, sometimes it, it is offering a word, but only when that person really invites us in. Um, but be praying about the specific interactions that we have with the people around us. Uh, everybody's nervous right now. Everybody is, is uncertain about what's going on. And so the more grace that we can have with the people around us uh, and praying for all the interactions, um, the more that God can use it. Uh, any thoughts there? Amen. Yeah, yeah I think you're absolutely correct. One, one of the things that I came to in my own ministry was the recognition that everybody lived at some level of pain. Everybody, every walk of life, every personality, and that what would happen in talking to people was 
be they would say something that would trigger what I call a counter story. And I'd start talking about my stuff when really the best ministry was, was for me not to go to my counter story, but to say, tell me more. Mm -hmm. And give people really a chance to be heard. Because there's a lot of pain out there mm. that a lot of people they don't talk about it with, until they know somebody's willing to hear it. Mm -hmm. And we get so good at hiding it too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That we and and I, I mean we all convince ourselves that nobody else has time for it. We don't. I don't want to burden anybody else for, with it. And um, absolutely. Yeah, and letting people in on our pain discloses our humanity. Mm. And uh, we don't. We want to be superhuman, not human. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. It's tough for us to be transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's tough for us to, to. I, I guess every time I think about that, I think about. In the church that I was in beforehand, there was a guy that one of we were in a deacons meeting one day, and one of the guy, one of the one of the deacons, one of the fellow deacons, and I said, uh, you know, what happens, you know, within my house and my family is our business, and the rest of us that were sitting at that table said, no, no, it's not, because. What happens in our families is everybody's business, as well as what happens within this whole community. The problem is we have to open up to one another because we don't know each other's pains unless we are willing to open up. Mm -hmm. We don't know where somebody's hurting and we don't know where we can minister. We don't know where to put the Band-Aid right. until we know where the hurt is. Mm -hmm. But heaven forbid, we should give the impression that we don't have it all together. Hmm. And, you know, I, I think it is that pridefulness uh, that, like you were talking about a minute ago, Janice, uh, I think it's that pridefulness that keeps us from being transparent and reaching out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I don't think I don't think God meant for us to be that way. I think He meant for us to be ministers to one another, That's for us right. to be prayerful to Him, and ask for that that direction, to ask for the way we needed to go. Absolutely. Hello. Absolutely. Um. All right. Let's keep on going here with. Uh, Verses 15 through 21. Before he had finished praying, and I love that part. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milka, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my Lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. And Rebecca arrives in this. Uh, uh, before he finished praying, Rebecca arrives on the scene and offers water to him and the camels. And that really shows me a couple things about her. She's a generous person. And she is willing to sacrifice and help. Uh, I... I've never watered a camel before. Uh, I hear they drink a lot, um, but I can't imagine waiting to water 10 different camels. I mean, I've got things to do, people, right? I mean, how many times do we, we go down the road, we see somebody in need, and we're like, you know, or, you know, somebody's broken down. It's like, I, you know, I'd love to help you, but I've got to get to church. I've, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in a hurry here. 
Um, and so uh, we, we see uh, Rebecca's generosity and her willingness to sacrifice her time um, and help others, to, to think of others. Um, in times like this, it's easy to think about ourselves. Um, but I, I think the biggest message that we can send is by continuing to think of others in a time like this, uh, being willing to continue to be generous, continue to be willing to sacrifice and help and, and not uh, give in to the, the fear and the, and the panic um, that, that is around us there. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll come back to that if we need to there, but let's, let's finish up this slide. And then I've got, a, I've got I think, two more slides here uh, that I wanna try to finalize. Uh, back to verse down all the way down to verse 54. Uh, this is after he's gone back to their house and he's talked to their family and they said, absolutely, Rebecca can go back. And then verse 54, uh, then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. Uh, when they got up the next morning, the servant said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother and mother replied, let the young woman remain with us for 10 days or so, then you may go. But he said to them, do not detain me. Now that the Lord has granted success to my journey, send me on my way so I may go to my master. Then they said, let's call the young woman and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? And her reply, I will go, she said. Uh, before we get to her reply, though, uh, anybody ever been like uh, her brother and mother? Uh, let her just stay with us about ten days or so, and then then it'll it'll happen. We'll let it happen. Uh, what were they really trying to say there? We don't want her to go. <laughs> yeah, that's a it's a no. Just wait for a little bit longer. Um, and so, say that say it again. Jared's famous for telling the boys, we shall see. They can ask for something and it's, yeah, we'll see. Which is a, which is really, uh, it, it ain't going to happen, but we'll see. I'm not going to tell you no, but, but, but uh, you're saying there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. So, uh, um, you can do it later. Yeah. I, I'll delay because yeah. we're really good at following through on things that we delay on. Right. You know, <laughs> Um, the kids are doing all their homework, right? And they're like, we'll just do it later. We'll, we'll come, let me, let me watch for a little bit right now and then I'll come back and do it. And it's like, I know what you're trying to do here, uh, mainly because I try to do it too. Um, but I, I love the simplicity with her reply. Um, the, the, the authors of Genesis put it as simple as it can be. I will go. What an incredible statement of faith that she had. With all the uncertainties, she was willing to go. It was uncharted territory. She didn't know where she was going. She had just met this guy. She did not know what lied ahead, and yet she was willing to go. And um, I think it's important for us to remember that we face the same choice. Um, we can stay where we are um, and worry about what we've lost, or we can actively look for things God wants us to do today. And I think that's really important. Um, if we, I mean, it, it hits us all. I mean, when I went to the store yesterday, I said, man, I've got to get this and I've got to get this. And if I don't get it now, and then I said, no, that's, it's going to be fine. They're, they're still running trucks. I need to get what we need um, because worrying about what we've lost and not being able to fill out my grocery list like I want to is not that big of a deal. Uh, but what we really need to do is actively look for what God is asking us to do today. Um, it, it's so important for us to keep our eyes focused on God in the midst of all of this. Um, as Rebecca did. She didn't look at all the reasons and all the worries and all the fears. She looked at what she knew in her heart that God wanted her to do, and she was obedient to that, and she did not turn away from that. 
And let me get to the last slide and then we'll have uh, just a minute or so for any other um, discussion. What can we do uh, in this uncharted territory? Spend time in God's word and especially read the Psalms. I, I love the Psalms so much because they're always speaking to me. I can always, there's always a Psalm that speaks into the, um, my life situation of the day. So spend time listening to God in his word. Um, check on people. Y'all, it is so important. And especially if you know somebody that's not tech savvy, call them or write them a card. Make sure that you are checking on people around you because that is one of the greatest ministries that we have. We are social creatures and there are people around us that need, uh, that need a phone call. And if God brings somebody to your heart, you may be the very phone call that they've been waiting for. Um, so uh, especially, I mean, if, if for those of us that are tech savvy or whatever that means, um, you got onto a, a Zoom call, so that, that means something. Um, but for folks that are not able to use the technology, don't have the expertise with that, make sure that we're, we're reaching out to them because they're not on social media and they're, they are feeling very isolated. So make sure that we're doing what we can there. Um, the third thing, and this is, this has kind of become my mantra here. Be smart, but don't panic. Um, social distancing is real and important. Wash your hands, but don't hoard supplies and be willing to sacrifice for others. Um, don't, we don't need to live in fear and anxiety and worry. We do need to be concerned. We need to use our brain and we need to be smart about it, but we don't need to panic. Um, and then, and this one has been working on me for a little over a week. Um, as we left to go to uh, Florida, um, the message that God kept telling me was be present with your family, be present with your kids. Don't lose this time that you have with them. And as we've come home, God's been saying the same thing. I, I know it gets challenging when you're in uh, cooped up in a house with the same people for multiple days. Um, but at the same time, we need to realize how amazing those relationships are and really appreciate those relationships. Um, and just be present with those people. Um, I, I miss being with my church people. I miss being with you guys. And I miss being there in the building and seeing each other and eating dinner together and, and all of those things. And it makes me appreciate not being able to have it right now makes me appreciate it even more. But don't lose sight of the people under the same roof uh, that you're living in uh, as well. Um, so just... We are in uncharted territory, but it's going to be okay. God is with us. We made it through a lot of other things, um, and we'll learn how to adjust to this. But just like Rebecca, um, going into uncharted territory doesn't have to send us into a tailspin. It doesn't have to send us into fear. It can send us into a deeper faith and a deeper relationship with God. So, All right, I just talked a whole lot there. Thoughts, comments? <laughs> finished it I like the comment that Ben made the other day we were talking about all the things that have happened since we've been married and all that God has pulled us through and you know you know the things that you run into that you just think why in the world is this happening? And how am I, you know, how am I going to get through this? And all of a sudden you find out you get through that one. And then, you know, there's something else that happens and God pulls you through that one. And so here we are, you know, facing uncharted territory and you know, God's going to pull us through this one too. Right. You know, it's just, hanging on for the same in the same way that we've hung on beforehand. And it's just trust in God. It'd be a, it'd be real easy to trust him if there was nothing wrong. That's right. That's exactly right. Other thoughts? Well, very good y'all. Well, we're, we're going to sign off here, but it is good to see people.
and I'm grateful for, for everyone that, uh, that, uh, signed in for it. And, uh, I did record it, so we're going to put it up on the YouTube channel and see what happens with that and, and that sort of thing. So, um, But it is good to see see some folks that hadn't been able to see in a while and um, just know that uh, we're praying for all of you and keep praying for each other. Um, oh, there's a hi, Haley. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. So, very good. Well, I feel left out. <laughs> we missed the youth um, Zoom, so we sat. She sat in on the adult. Yeah, I couldn't. that's a good yeah. idea. Next week, we we have like seven little boxes of youth, so <laughs> we're gonna do it again next week and try to have some more. That's right. That's exactly right. Very good. Uh, Allison, would you close us with a prayer? Lord, we love you, and we thank you for this day, and we are so thankful that the church is not the building, but the church is the people, and that you have called us to be your people, and that, God, we are on mission no matter where we are. Father, I pray that as we walk through this uncharted territory, that you would build us up, that you would give us the resources we need, the time that it takes to travel this road, and the obedience to follow you. God, I just pray that you would be with those who are listening live to this and then those that will chime in later when it is posted on YouTube. And God, I just ask that you would watch over our nation, heal our land, Father. Be with those who are sick, those who are hurting. Be with those who have lost loved ones. Be with those who are recovering. And God, we just ask that you would lead and guide and that we would listen and follow. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody. Y'all, everybody stay safe. It's good to see everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night John boy. <laughs> <laughs> that was good.